From KGW News, this is Straight Talk with Laurel Porter. Hello and welcome to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. Labor Day is behind us, and that means we'll start hearing a lot more about the upcoming 2024 election. And it's going to be an extraordinary one locally. Portland City Council is going to look very different after the next election. In 2022, voters approved a new system of government with 12 commissioners instead of five, which includes the mayor right now. And the mayor will no longer have a seat on the council in the new government and no veto power. He or she will have executive authority over city business and collaborate with and delegate responsibilities to a new city administrator. And the first person to throw their hat in the ring for that new role for Portland Mayor is current city commissioner Mingus Maps. Maps was elected to city council in 2020 and was a vocal critic of the proposed changes for Portland's form of government. He even wanted to put an alternative measure on the ballot. But now Maps wants to be a part of that change and says the new mayor's role is going to be critical to addressing Portland's challenges. Here's a little bit of background on Mingus Maps. He got his bachelor's degree in political science from Reed College and his PhD from Cornell University. He was a political science professor at Brandeis University, Bowdoin College and Portland State. He's a single dad raising two teenage sons, Langston and Coltrane. If elected, Maps would become Portland's first black mayor. Currently, he heads up the Water Bureau, Bureau of Environmental Services, and Portland Bureau of Transportation, or PBOT. And now, a candidate for mayor of Portland. Here to tell us why he wants to be Portland's next mayor and how he would help the city meet its challenges, welcome to my guest, Portland City Commissioner Mingus Maps. Welcome to Straight Talk. Oh, thank you so much for having me here today. We were talking about how we have never met in person, that you were on the show during the pandemic virtually, but first time in the studio. It's remarkable. I know we have been chatting for about two years now, and the fact that this is the first time we've been in the same room at the same time is a sign of just what a remarkable run it's been. Well, Great to see you in person. It's a relief to have people back in uh, the studio. Well, thanks for having well, thanks, me. Well, thanks again. Let's talk about this reversal that yeah. you were this critical opponent of a new form of government and now you want to be a part of it you actually want to lead it as yep. mayor why the change of heart well i've always been an advocate for charter reform indeed uh, when i was running for the first time that was one of the things that i talked about consistently i was a skeptic of some parts of the charter uh, uh changes that we're talking about specifically uh the new electoral system that we we will use to elect members of council so and this is very important for everyone to understand the ballot that you're about to see is fundamentally different. The rank choice. The rank voting. choice. So we're going to have, instead of electing members of council citywide, um, we're going to have districts. And then within those districts, we're going to have rank choice voting, uh, which has all sorts of interesting new implications. I believe that under this system, you'll go in and say, uh, candidate Jane is my top candidate. Joe is my second most favored candidate. And Billy is my third most favored candidate. Then some complicated math will happen. And uh, through that, we'll figure out who actually represents the different districts around the city. You know, one of my concerns here is, number one, that's kind of complicated. It's not intuitive at all. Uh, another uh, th aspect of this, which will be, be very different, is I believe in order to actually win a seat on the new council, um, you'll need to get only about 21% of the vote. Uh, I'm still wrapping my mind around that. So you're opposed to that part of uh, the, the I, government. Uh, I, I thought we could have. I like the idea of moving to districts. I was a little bit skeptical of, uh, of, of going with ranked choice voting. I kind of, when, we, when the voters were debating whether or not this is something we wanted to implement, I raised these arguments and I said, hey, if we, if we vote down this particular package, I'll bring forward another package, which basically does the same thing that uh, we're accomplishing with the bulk of charter reform, except without the right choice voting piece. Uh, the voters chose it to go in a different direction with that. That's completely fine. Uh, you well, know. help us understand the new mayor's role as opposed to the yeah. current mayor's role. Sure. Well, right now the mayor is um, uh, uh, is essentially a member of council. Uh, the mayor, um, every member of council right now is in charge of a handful of bureaus. As you mentioned, I'm the water guy, the environmental services guy, and the Peabot guy. And the mayor is not too different from me. Uh, the mayor has a handful of bureaus that he manages. Uh, he has the police and some budgeting bureaus and whatnot. Now, in the next form of government, the mayor won't sit on council. Uh, um, he won't have he or she won't have a tie-breaking vote, uh, or he, he'll have a tie-breaking vote, but he won't have a veto. Uh, 
um, again, that's maybe was something I would have done a little bit different uh, um, if um, if my argument had won the day. Uh, but the mayor will have a very important role in number one, hiring the city manager. Basically, a lot of the day-to-day -day, uh, management of city bureaus will shift from individual commissioners to a new city manager. The mayor will hire that city manager. The mayor will also hire the chief of police. Uh, so the mayor is going to remain, I think, very engaged in uh, public safety issues. Uh, the first budget that council sees will be drafted by the mayor. Then the council can go in and offer amendments and whatnot. Um, and I believe the mayor will probably have some important roles in, um, number one, establishing the new culture of the city. You know, there's a bunch of stuff that you can put on paper, but there are informal norms that kind of shape how city, city Hall works. Uh, essentially, our next mayor is gonna be a lot like George Washington, who kind of helped establish the character of the country. Our next mayor is gonna help establish the character of Portland 2.0. Well, let, 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 let me jump in here. You do talk about Portland 2.0 and in yeah. announcing that you wanna be the next mayor. You said we have to have the courage to yeah. admit when policies have failed and have the courage to change. What specific policies do you mean have failed? Oh my gosh. Well, I think there's a um, clear consensus that our houselessness policies have failed, our uh, public safety policies have failed, and our economic recovery policies have failed. And you can see that by the fact that we have, more, despite spending hundreds of millions of dollars to house um, our health, houseless neighbors, we have more people sleeping on the streets than ever. In terms of public safety, um, the number of homicides this town is seen has increased about fourfold in the past five or six years and for the first time in 40 years uh, um, I'll tell you the number of people who are living in Portland has actually decreased people are fleeing Portland uh, that combination of high crimes high homelessness and uh, people literally fleeing the city is a sign of a city heading in the wrong direction well, let me ask you though commissioner aren't you a part of those failed policies as a commissioner and part of a city council well I think I've done a good job in helping turn this around you know since since I've been on council, which I think has been about two and a half years, actually homicides are starting to go down. Um, I think we have a much more rational approach to houselessness, um, and I'm certainly doing everything I can to make sure that Portland is a great place to start and grow a family and a business. Well, in announcing that you were running for mayor, the Oregonian said that you have yet to notch or champion a signature initiative. How do you respond to that? Well. Uh, um, I would disagree to a significant uh, um, extent. You know, when I came into office, I think the uh, the theme of the day was defunding police. You know, when I ran the first time, when it was a very hard thing to do, I argued that actually we needed to right size our police department. Since I've gotten there, you actually see that we have managed to grow our police department, and if we stay on track, we're I'll actually have a police department that is actually adequate to meet the the needs of the city. And at the same time, I haven't forgotten the fact, uh, which I can never forget as a black man and as a black father that it's important to have a police department which is equitable and fair and transparent and just to all people regardless of the color of, of their skin. Um, you know, since I've taken over Peabot in just the past six months, you know, I think we've taken that organization, number one, to have started to move it towards financial solvency and have gotten that bureau deeply engaged in some of the challenges uh, for people who are living on the street. You know, Peabot's in charge of making sure our sidewalks are clear. Uh, we're we're uh, doing a lot of work trying to help people who are living our, in RVs connect to social services. So we've been very flexible, very creative around uh, making sure that uh, we can do everything in our power to actually help. Portland prosper again. In the town hall that you recently had, you yep. did talk about those three areas of yep. focus, homelessness, public safety, and economic recovery. Yeah. So in homelessness, the city council passed this daytime camping ban, yep. which you also voted for. Yep. We see camps cleared and then they just return. Yep. How do you think that ban's working? Uh, not well enough, um, although I think that uh, we can make it work better. We intentionally tried to spend the summer doing education, reaching out to folks, telling them, hey, you know, under the new norms, we really need to take a have you move through tents during the time so people can in get into their businesses, their offices, their homes, and whatnot. Uh, also doing education about connecting them to services and uh, stable housing. There's also a challenge in this space. You know, uh, the city is in charge of making sure that our rights of way is are clear and clean and safe. The county basically is responsible for mental health services, drug and alcohol addiction services, and fundamentally housing uh, um, the and homeless. And you've said that you think the city and county should sever their formal contract with the Joint Office of Homeless Services. How will that help address 
homelessness? Well, I'll tell you right now that the city of Portland uh, gives the county about $40 million a year to support uh, homeless services. Uh, and that's important. Uh, the county needs plays an important role here. The city needs to play an important role here. I'll tell you, um, under our current contract with the county, the city has no control of how those dollars get spent. And indeed, uh, we don't even have control over whether those dollars get spent. So I'm doing outreach uh, at PBOT every day to people, for example, living in RVs, uh, um, trying to help them uh, get stood up. But I don't have a partner on the county side to say, hey, you know, you can go here, you can go to this safe park village or whatnot. We, we have to do much better in this space. And right now, the, our fundamental contract basically says the city gives the county money, the county controls everything there. We need much more clarity about how this relationship works and what services we get in exchange for the tens of millions of dollars uh, we um, allocate to the county for houseless services. You've, you've said also in your town hall, the city hall is functionally broken. If that's true, how do you think the city's going to do a better job than the county when it comes to homeless services? Well, I, I can't remember the exact context where I, sa I, I said that. Um, I think the city, especially since I've gotten there, um, and I'm not the only one who contributed to uh, uh, this change, I think we've gotten much better at program implementation um, and evaluating when our programs are working and when they're not working. When they're not working, we've had the courage to actually change. I think that's something that um, our next mayor really needs to bring into City Hall. Uh, there's no uh, shame in failing to uh, conquer a challenging problem. Um, but there is a lot of shame in uh, continuing to do uh, something over and over again, which fails, you know, and we continue to engage in that same behavior and expect different results. You know, that's the definition of crazy. Frankly, that's how council uh, and City Hall has worked for a long time. I think there are other parts of government that uh, continue to behave like that. Uh, one of the changes I want to bring to City Hall is this, this commitment to evaluation, this courage to kind of change when things aren't working. You mentioned the RVs that Peabot, yeah. that you had up Peabot. It helps the people who yeah. are camping in RVs, homeless people, move into this new safe rest village in Northeast Portland. Yeah. We just did a story a couple of days ago, and there were a lot of frustration. Yeah. There was a lot of frustration among some of the homeless campers because they couldn't get information on how to get into that RV uh, the Safe Rest Village there. One gentleman even knocked on the gate. The Salvation Army came to the gate and gave him the number for Peabot. And right. he just, he wanted to know how, that, how do you find out how to get in? Should it be so complicated and so confusing? It shouldn't be, but I'll, I'll tell you, um, you know, the, um, this is an example of the city and the county not working particularly well together. You know, uh, what I've done at Peabot is I've taken essentially the folks who go out and literally issue parking tickets and I've repurposed them to actually do houseless outreach to people living in RVs. Uh, you know, that comes at some cost to the city. Um, I would argue that some of the best uh, homeless outreach workers that we actually have in the region right now are actually the Peabot people. But all we can really do is try to connect them to the uh, safe park village that the county has set up and the county seems to be struggling a little bit to figure out uh, how to make that work you know we are more than bending over backwards you know we're literally the parking uh, the, the parking meter people uh, and the parking uh, and the people who give you uh, tickets when you park too long in a, in, a, in a parking space we've repurposed ourselves trying to let people know where they go you know we'll even try to get you a tow we'll try to get your uh, vehicle fixed but this is a, a remarkable stretch for a bureau um, that is not fundamentally in the business of houseless services. Um, I would make the argument that it would be particularly helpful if the county could begin to move into this space. You know, when I, we handed over $40 million to the county to uh, help with these issues, certainly one of my expectations is that they would help us do our work, you know. Um, it's my responsibility as the head of Peabot to keep our right of ways clear and clean. Uh, um, and I can kind of connect people to the services, houseless services, but those houseless services need to be there. And one reality in Portland is we don't have enough shelter beds, we don't have enough treatment beds, we don't have enough detox beds. Now that needs to change and frankly all of that lives in the county space. Another one of your focus areas is economic recovery yeah. and the Washington Post recently published an article called the Urban Doom Loop <laughs> and it said all across the country yeah. downtowns, office spaces and shopping centers are at risk of becoming ground zero for a new economic hazard, the yeah. Urban Doom Loop and this is how they described it. Started during the pandemic with more people 
people yep. working from home, a lot of people still are, that prompted vacancy rates yep. in buildings. Buildings value, the sale prices went down, creating what it called a commercial real estate apocalypse, yep. cutting local tax revenue, yep. and potentially turning mid-sized cities across the country into ghost towns. Yeah. How do you prevent that happening in Portland? Well, I think there are a couple of things that city government can do in particular. One is, you know, it's a reality. One of the reasons why people don't frequent downtown right now is that there's a perception that it's not clean and safe. And frankly, it's much better than people think it is. However, it's undeniable, even if you just look at what's happened downtown in the last week or so, we've had some horrible crimes in some of our public spaces. We need to do a better job of making sure that our streets are safe. And another reality is, and I think a lot of cities will discover this moving forward, is that, um, you know, communities that thrive during the pandemic had a rich mix of commercial space and residential space. I think one lesson for Portland coming out of the pandemic is we really need more residential housing downtown. The good news is uh, that's also, we have a deep demand for housing. So I'm deeply committed to working uh, with uh, this council and the next council to make sure that we can incentivize building more affordable housing downtown. That's gonna keep our streets vibrant and uh, vibrant and lively and prosperous as we move forward into the deeper into the 21st century. You also said during that town hall that you think taxes are too high. Oh, yeah. That Portland citizens pay the highest tax in the country, yep. right up there with Manhattan millionaires. Yep. Do you think the city, the county, metro should roll back some of the taxes? I think we need to look at that. Uh, um, absolutely. It's going to be challenging because we do have some fixed costs here. However, I think if you take a look at uh, why Portland is losing population for, for the first time in 40 years, part of it is, is that it's just economically um, not viable for too many families and too many businesses to do work here. If we're going to keep people in the city, if we're going to keep businesses in this city, we have to uh, recognize the costs that are associated with living in Portland. And I think it's time that we begin to ratchet those down to a reasonable level. As I mentioned, if you're elected, you'd be the first black mayor yeah. in the city of Portland. How do you view your role and responsibility if you were mayor to work toward racial equity and opportunity? Oh, my gosh. Well, first, let me say uh, this is a powerful um, reality for me. You know, I have my family's had roots in the Pacific Northwest and Portland, particularly in particular uh, for decades. Um, my father, uh, my grandfather fought in World War II. He used to come up to Portland um, on R&R. Uh, &R, and, you know, back in the 40s, he could not get served in a restaurant mm -hmm. uh, here. The only restaurants in Portland that would serve him were Chinese restaurants, which I think tells you something about uh, the rich um, tapestry, which is Portland. And in the space of a generation to go from that Portland to a Portland where uh, I, I have a real shot to be the next mayor is incredibly powerful. Um, at the same time, you know, who, why am I? Um, how did I become a, a black guy with a PhD and a very interesting career as both an academic and a public servant? Uh, I'm that person because of the city, because of Portland. The, Portland made me who I am. I went to Reed College, as you mentioned. I grew up in Portland at a time when we were on the cutting edge of just amazing urban policy, whether you're talking about environmental protection, uh, uh, um, transportation innovation, just having a really great city hall. Um, so um, the seventh city is giving a lot back to me. Um, I look forward to have this opportunity to give back to the city. And one of my goals is to make Portland the kind of city that uh, can really embrace and nurture uh, brown kids uh, who are you know on the school buses uh, today I hope that they can grow up and be the fifth and sixth black or Latino or uh, Asian mayor that, that Portland has I think her 21st century is going to be our best best century ever Commissioner Mingus maps it's time for us to take a break yeah. thanks for being here and we'll continue our conversation with the commissioner right after this Welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. We're talking with Portland City Commissioner Mingus Maps. First elected in 2020, Maps is the first person to announce he wants to be the city's next mayor under the new form of government approved by voters. Welcome once again to my guest, Commissioner Mingus Maps. Thank Thanks you. again for being here. Glad to be here. One of your other focus areas, you mentioned it at the top of the show, but let's dig into it a little bit more, is public safety. Yeah. 
as the new mayor, like the current mayor, you've said you still want to be in charge of the police bureau. What would you do differently? Oh my gosh, well, we have to remain committed to right-sizing our police department. You'd expect a city of our size to have about 1,200 police officers, or yeah, 1,200 police officers as of today. I think we have about 803. I believe that's one of the reasons why we have, you know, record numbers of, frankly, traffic deaths, record numbers of homicides. Um, I want to continue to grow the police department department um, and as we grow the police department uh, what you'll see me do is add back specialty units like traffic enforcement like retail thefts like detectives that's going to make us much effect much more effective at addressing the uh, public safety problems that most Portlanders are really struggling with right now and the current mayor did include millions of dollars in his budget yep. for 43 more police yep. officers it'll take a couple years to get them on board you know some of the rank and file police officers I've talked to over the years have felt at times the city didn't have their back yep what is your message to police officers? Well, I, one of the things I've tried to do with police officers and anyone else who has worked for the city is to actually have their back, um, recognize the challenges they face. You know, I have high expectations, but if you are meeting those expectations, I will stand shoulder to shoulder with you. And that is uh, how I behave uh, in PBOT. That's how I behave in BES. And when I'm police commissioner, that's how I will behave as mayor. You're going to be working if you're mayor with 12 commissioners. Yeah. That seems a little unwieldy. How do does the mayor, the new mayor, and how will you, if you're elected, get your vision and agenda through? You have no voting power, no veto power. Well, it's going to take a lot of collaboration. It's going to take a lot of discussion. Uh, the mayor in this new form of government is going to be uh, a unique and extremely important character. You know, moving forward, we'll have 12 members of council, each essentially representing neighborhoods. But the only person in City Hall who has a citywide perspective is the mayor. Um, and so one of my obligations is to put forward a vision for the city uh, that unites us, whether all the way out from, you know, our eastern borders to the West Hills, from south to north, uh, coming up with a common vision for Portland. I have a vision for Portland. My goal is to make Portland the best run city in America. I think we can achieve that. But if we're going to achieve that, we have to have the courage to change and we have to have the patience to work together. What is your relationship with the current mayor? Um, it's great. Um, I, I think of City Hall as being a team uh, and like teams, you know, some days you get frustrated with each other, but if we're going to be effective, and I think we have a pretty effective city council, uh, we have to work together and listen to each other and compromise and learn from each other. I think we do that really well. How would you grade how he's, the job he's done over the last term? I will give him an A for effort. Uh, um, he is working awfully hard under some enormously challenging circumstances. Um, I still think, uh, as I take a look around the city, um, I still come to the conclusion we're heading in the wrong direction, and when you're heading in the wrong direction, one of the things you have to do is have the courage to change. So the mayor may run yep. again. We've we've heard that. No no announcement. And all of your other fellow commissioners, Dan Ryan, Carmen Rubio, Renee Gonzalez, they all have said that they may run yeah. as well. And also former Multnomah County Sheriff Mike Reese has also been talked about. It's going to be a competitive race. Why do you think you're the best candidate of, of all your fellow commissioners and the mayor? Well, I look forward to the dialogue we have. You know, uh, democracy is not just about uh, the vote you take do uh, you take on election day. It's also about the dialogue that ha that leads up to election day. You know, what I can offer is my vision and my experience. Again, my vision is to make Portland the best run city in America. Um, you know, I think we need to focus in on three core problems, public safety, houselessness, and economic recovery. I think I have a proven re track record of running uh, some of the biggest bureaus in the city, you know, between Water, BES, and PBOT essentially half of the city's employees and about half of the city's budget uh, are under my portfolio. I've proven to be, I think, a very capable leader in this space. Um, I recognize that the city needs to change and uh, I think you can just look at me and you can tell that um, once you have a Mayor Mengus Maps, you are going to have a mayor unlike any Portland has had in our 171 year long history. We have about a minute left. I want to ask you about um, your path to public service. Yeah. I understand it goes back to, to your mother. She was a big influence on you when she worked in the welfare office. Yeah. Tell us how that shaped who you are today. Oh my gosh, well, yeah, absolutely. I, I think public service uh, runs in the family. My mom was an eligibility worker for the w old welfare system when I was a kid. Um, after school then, I used to actually take the bus uh, down to the welfare office and uh, I used to uh, hang out in the back offices until my mom got off work. Um, that really showed me people who were actually meeting directly with some of the most vulnerable people in our community, helping the, to connect them with services. I also saw the great frustration that comes along with uh, um, trying to do government work. Um, 
uh, but frankly, I cannot imagine a higher calling for me. Um, I'm, I feel very lucky to have the um, experience and the parents I have, and very lucky to have the opportunities that Portlanders have, um, have created for me. And just about 15 seconds left for a final message you'd like to leave with viewers. Well, listen, I hope you, that you pay attention to this election. It will be one of the most important elections in Portland history. It's going to look, the ballot's going to look very different uh, than any that you've seen before. Uh, I hope that you will consider uh, my candidacy, Mengus Maps. Uh, I have a website, MengusMaps.com. If you want to learn about our campaign or get involved, go to MengusMaps.com. Commissioner, thank you for joining us here thank on you. Straight Talk. It's been a pleasure. And thank you for watching and for listening to our podcast. You can find it wherever you get your podcasts. Search, search for KGW Straight Talk. And the commissioner is going to stay with us for a bonus episode. You can find that in our article on KGW.com, on KGW's YouTube channel, and KGW Plus on Roku. Join me next week when my guest is Commissioner Dan Ryan. What is he thinking about the mayor's race? We'll see you next week for Straight Talk. Have a great week.